for what? Nah, just messing around. Actually, uh, my homie hooked it up, dog, and came through, and let me homie stay right here. Uh, don't pass pad, dog. It shouldn't even look like a pad. It looks like a little mini hotel or some shit. Look at Big Joe, acts like he doesn't know how to put it on. All of a sudden. No, look at him, look at him, look at him. Acts like he never put one on before. My head is like, look at this guy, like a natural. <laughs> this guy's a natural. That was the last one. I was so scared. Everybody was bumping into me. Appreciate that, dog. Damn. You're gonna smell that ammonia. Smell that right there. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck no. I mean, not right now. Woo. It's a fire right there. After for after. Another video. Let's go. Come on, baby. Hey guys, what's up? My name is JC. I am Ron Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss nothing, and enjoy my shenanigans. If you are part of my crew, my raza, my familia, you already know who you are. Subanse la suburban, put some gas in it, because we're going to drive around Chicago. I love my city, man. For those of you that are new, much love and respect. I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. My name is JC. My real name is Julio. I spent 17 years of my life incarcerated, a couple months more, in state prison in Illinois, state prison in Arizona, Mexican prison in Mexico. I actually went to one, two, three, four, five prisons in Mexico. San Luis Potosí, Cerezo, Saltillo, Cerezo, Monterrey, Topo Chico, Cerezo, Juárez, Cerezo, and Las Islas Marias. Las Islas Marias is a federal prison in Mexico where they send drug offenders that are not violent because they send them to an island to go do their time. 
and that could they could actually take their family with them to go do their time uh so if you're living with uh your spouse your your wife your kids all of them are doing time with you but they're taking time off your sentence ah, that's good huh take the whole freaking family with me <laughs> but with the with what that prison does in that island is that they 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 have three cities in that island. It's a pretty big island, like Islas Marias. They have where all the single women are at, all the single men, and then where families live. That's the main, main area where they, you know, the boats, the Marines get there, and that's where we uh, get off the boat to visit the prisoners. In that island, people live free. There's no fence, there's nothing. There's just, you know, water, the seas around the island, and it's one of the most highly, uh, Great white <laughs> sharks area. <laughs> There's a lot of sharks over there, so nobody tries it. There's been two attempts since that prison was open, and no one made it. <laughs> so yeah, I ain't jumping in the fucking water. But but my point was is that when I got there and I I started to see how people were doing time there. You know, I was like, shit, I could do like 20 years like this because you're, you're living with your wife, you got your kids there, they're going to school. So you're pretty much just living like on an island, you know, like like a paradise island. You know, you're, you're not locked in a cell, you're not, you're not none of those things. So you're out and about free walking. There you knew who had money, who was the biggest drug, drug lord locked up by the bike that he was driving. There were some expensive ass bikes that some of those dudes had in there, like $4,000 bikes. They were like for rough terrain and all that stuff. So, you know, um, it's crazy. They closed it now. It's a museum now. They closed the prison down and it's a museum now. You could actually go there and visit it. But I have a lot of communication with a lot of the people that were there when it was open. Um, and that's the time where actually I sat down I flew there to go pay some money back and to try and get one of my other guys out. And I flew there with a lot of money. And in the process, the Marines found it. It was a big ordeal, you know. It's, it's, you're not supposed to be walking into a prison with, you know, close to 30 grand on you. <laughs> so, you know, um, the Silas Marias, I respect most of my life incarcerated and then when I when I got out of Mexico and I came out to the US you know I, I met a lot of big people in that prison and I got back to work again I got back to work doing illegal stuff illegal activity and eventually it, it caught up to me in a different way because this time it, it wasn't the cops that were trying to get me this time it was like my own people trying to rob me kill me you know if you've watched some of my videos you've seen how i was set up by my own boys that's why i had to flip and, and you know protect myself and it, it was a crazy crazy part of my life because i was making so much money but at the same time i had so many enemies that i didn't even know who to watch my back from i didn't know if you were a friend or our enemy because everybody was pretty much out to get me and when I became a land king it made it even worse you know I went from being an SD to land king now it's I got two different you know things going on but I got tired tired of doing time I got tired of, of being in a cell most of my time was done done in uh, mediums and a medium is pretty much like a high. I mean, the difference between a medium and a high is that mediums get actually like movements. Like they'll, they'll be able to move around. And on the, uh, the highs, most of the highs are on lockdown 24, not 24, 7, 23 hours a day. And then they get one hour out. But they're locked in their units, you know, and... and it's more room to move around with, but it's like doing county time. I've explained this to you guys before. County time is hard time. Once you get the yard and you get into your little schedule, then it's different. And, you know, when I got to the feds and I was spending most of my time in, in segregation or, you know, just on lockdown and stuff like that, I came to the conclusion one day that I was just tired, tired of 
of thinking less of myself and thinking that this is what I deserved and this is what's going to be my life. And one day out of nowhere, I was just like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm tired. I'm tired of pretending to be tough. I'm tired of pretending to be this big, tough, like, gang member and this big guy that works for the cartel. And, like, it was so, that day, it, it was crazy because that day just came into me like, like a thought where I was, like, my whole life I had been wearing different masks, you know, because at the end of the day, when I, w when I went to go pull that mission, I was scared. I was shitting in my pants, but I pretended like I, I wasn't. I pretended like I was this big time hardcore killer and blah, blah, blah. And just, you know, I, 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 I portrayed something that I wasn't because I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a killer. I'm not a tough guy. I'm not. I like to laugh. I like to be happy. And even though everything that's happened to me, for those that don't know my story, I was molested, tortured. They did a number on me as a kid. They did a really big number on me to the point where by the time I was nine, I was seeing a psychiatrist. I was trying to, I feel embarrassed when I say it, but I have to say it because this is how fucked up I was. And I know that there's people out there just like me that I'm trying to, you know, help and get them to see the light. But I was, uh, you know, hurting small animals. I, I would get like birds or mice and hamsters and, and hurt them. It caused me, I guess, joy. And it's, it's, it's fucked up to think about it. But the only reason why I get so emotional about it is because I've I've come such a long way from where I was at. And to still be able to hold it together, you know, that's why I can't stand when I, I hear motherfuckers like on social media talking all that tough game and how, you know, they did time and, and this and that. And it's nothing to be proud of. It's nothing to be proud of. And it's, it's, it's stupid and immature and uneducated to brag about prison time. Do I joke around about it and say, hey, that's what I learned in prison? Yeah. Yeah, my, my psychiatrist told me because I told her one day that, you know, I felt comfortable there. I, I, I wanted to go back. I missed it. I missed the camaraderie. I missed my friends. I missed how I felt in there. And it was just for the simple fact that I grew up in there. So it's all I knew. And there is where I learned how to brush my teeth. And there is where I learned how to shave, how to shower. Th those are the places where I, that's the place where I grew up. So I thought that that's all I knew. My life started to change once I started to realize that I had a choice. <laughs> choice. That's simple. That's simple of just saying yes or no. To friends, family, didn't matter. If a family member gives you a gun and tells you to go pull a burn, then obviously they don't give a fuck about you. It's taken time to put myself together and it's taken time to create my nonprofit. It's taken time to create my brand, Wrong to Strong. It's taken time to just redo myself. Whether that's in the gym, reading, writing, everything. It's taken time. But I'd rather be doing this time than that time. I've lost so many friends to prison terms, gang violence, drug violence, addiction, PTSD. There's, the list goes on and on and on just because this is, this is what Wrong to Strong is. I actually wrote it down. <laughs> it was too many of them. PTSD, addiction, depression, hope. Fitness, habits, lazy, guilt, bipolar, one of my biggest ones. Mental health, that's my biggest ones. Gangs, sex addiction, anger management, anxiety, worry, fear. Emotions are very, very powerful if you don't know 
how to tell them apart. For a long time, I felt scared. I felt fear. I felt all these things that I felt as a little kid, but that's what it was. It was the little kid in me that was still feeling that he was still there. I'm not that little kid no more. I'm a grown ass fucking man that weighs 248 pounds and bench presses 405, squats 500, deadlift six. So no, I'm not that kid no more. I'm not. So I had to do the work for myself to get better. Because if I can't get better, then I can't help you get better. Because I have to lead by example. Do I do everything to the T? No. I'm far from perfect. Far from perfect. I fuck up. I've told you guys in the past, I have a PhD in fuckerism. I fucked up so many times, it's ridiculous. But the thing is, I get back up. I don't stay down no more like I used to. I used to stay down in the ground and let everybody kick me and step on me and call me every name in the book. And I used to believe them. This is why I never went to school because I actually believed the people that called me stupid and retarded and thought that I was slow my whole life. I believed them. So I didn't go to school. I didn't try. And I'll tell you a story that made a big change in my life. I was doing a prison term in Arizona. I was at the Motel 6 prison for DUIs. I got a year sentence because I got an extreme DUI on my motorcycle and I ran from the cops. <laughs> yeah, I was at the strip club. I seen them and I took off and they started chasing me. And I was like wasted. I was drunk. I was on ecstasy. I, I was a mess. I was wearing my Rough Rider vest. I, I mean, I was sticking out like a short thumb. They arrested me. I got jail time. I went in and Everybody there was like going to school and, and you know doing stuff because it's a small yard so everybody likes to stay busy and my, my cellmate was like hey you're gonna, you're gonna get into the GD class and I was like no for what? You know I don't even know how to read dude for what? And this is how ironic you know the, the whatever your higher power is God the universe whatever this is how it happens is that I waited a week before I was going home and I grew some balls and I went up to education and I told the teacher, I want to take the test. And she said, you can't, you're too short, you won't pass it. And I was like, no, I, I want to take the test. And she's like, you don't have time to study, nothing. I was like, give me the book, I'll study. The test was one day prior to my release date, so I had six days to study. And she kept telling me, no, no, no. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, just let me do it. She gave me the book. I studied my fucking ass off. I took the test on a Thursday because I got released on a Friday. I had a close homie of mine that was had a lot more time to do that was there. So pretty much when I when I was leaving, you know, I told him just call me and let me know. Let me know if I didn't pass, man. I mean, in my head. In my head, I had already said to myself, I didn't pass. And you guys don't realize how powerful self-talk is. Self-talk is so powerful that you actually start to believe yourself. Don't do that. Glamorize yourself. Tell yourself you're smart. Tell yourself you're beautiful. Tell yourself you love yourself. That you're smart. That you're intelligent. That you're strong. Even if you're lying to yourself, <laughs> work on it. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you gotta love yourself. You gotta give yourself that positive reinforcement for you to be able to feel that way. It's like I've told you guys in the past. If you hang around with shit, guess what? You're gonna get shit on yourself. It's 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 starting to. Love yourself is when my whole life started to change. Little, even little, because I didn't love myself at all, not even an inch. And I started little by little. And little moments of trophies, I call them trophies because it's like a uh, diploma that I'm getting, you know? Moments like that is that started changing my life and shipping me to where finding my purpose was. And my purpose, I believe my purpose is to help dudes like me because there's a million JCs out there. A million of them. 
ex-gang members or gang members, addicts. I mean, you name it. You name it. Everything. He called me on Sunday. I passed that test with a perfect score. I'm sorry. It makes me happy and sad <clears throat> because for a long time, I didn't educate myself because I thought I was dumb. Because I believed others. I'm here to tell you, you believe in yourself and that's it. And there will be people that will hold you up and be there for you. But it's up to you to choose them. Very, very. You got to be very, very careful how you choose the people that you surround yourself with. And what you think and what you do. Remember, you have a choice. You have a choice. Make it happen. Fuck, that was fucking intense. Whew. This is why I do this shit. I love it. Hey guys, thank you, man. My name's JC. I am Ron Strong. If you haven't subscribed, you better subscribe because there's a lot of shit coming up, man. I'm telling you. Stay in your lane, give somebody a hug. Don't judge nobody. Live savage. You only have one life to live. If you live it right, one life is all you need. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.